Welcome to Menopause Monday. Today I'm talking about menopause, hormones and weight gain. Um, just want to give you some clarity around what's going on with our bodies at this age, this sort of stage of our life, whether you're perimenopausal or you're through the menopause already, you'll find that whatever you've been doing up to now may not be working any longer. So there, there are quite a few studies out there. One in particular that I read was the um, sort of taking Western women into account uh, because our lifestyles are not quite so healthy as uh, ladies in like Japan, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if, we, if, we, if we keep doing exactly what we've done, so a woman of a normal healthy weight has done exactly what she does throughout her life, in those seven to 10 years after the menopause or going through that menopausal phase, she will have 64% of women will be registered obese. Scary, isn't it? And after the age of 65, that goes up to 74% of women are morbidly obese. That's scary. So I think the old adage of calories in, calories out, I hope, I hope by now has kind of, hit the fan and exploded because it's not true maybe younger years calories in calories out and you'll be sort of you're healthy and you're vital and you're moving around and doing what you should do to a degree I think you could use that as as pretty good indicator once you go through the menopause it no longer it's no longer really it's not the crucial factor of course if you starve yourself you're going to lose weight but that's not healthy and also if you starve yourself when you start to eat again you're going to put that weight on plus more that's the way it happens Calories in, calories out. I just want to sort of go over it really, really quickly. There are certain foods that have higher calories and will help you reduce, um, lose weight because of the, the reaction, the positive reaction they have on the impact they have on the body. And there are certain food stuff like treats that are full of processed, refined sugars, dully, dully, da. They might have a lesser cal caloric value than the health the, the the healthy high heavy calorie food but the lower calorie food will set off a negative chain reaction of chemicals within your body affecting you on a molecular level and it's it's, it's just going to have a negative impact on all sorts of different things so your blood sugars your satiety hormones your stress hormones your sleep things like that it's also going to it can set you up in a vicious circle because of the way the, the body reacts to foods that technically we shouldn't really be eating. You know, healthy, raw sugar in and of itself is, is okay. There's no, nothing wrong with raw sugar. When we eat it in the amounts that we should eat it, and normally it's part, part and parcel of a food group, like orange, an orange, for instance, orange juice itself, I wouldn't touch with a barge pole. Yes, it's got some vitamins in it, but all the fiber's been removed just eat an orange because it's got the fiber which helps the body manage that spike in sugar more effectively um orange juice apple juice all these things majority of the ones that you buy in the shop have all, already been treated and processed so the the goodness is negligent negligible but the fact that they are so loaded with just sugar just leave it on the shelf i promise you if you want to have something juicy eat the fruit it will make a massive massive difference to you positively rather than the juice in a carton um so basically modern you know obesity research search is showing that um just calories in calories out is not sufficient to maintain a healthy weight or indeed reach a healthy weight beyond menopause during and beyond menopause um when we throw in sort of gut hormones and sex hormones and the changes in the sort of roller coaster ride of the perimenopause and the joys of the hot flashes and the brain fog and the anxiety and ugh, everything else that comes with it, um, it's such a rock and roll existence. Um, you know, it, we do need to support our hormones. Now, you don't need to know how a television is built to work in order to actually watch the television and then enjoy it. So this is not going to be going into deep dive into hormones because I, I know this is it's a bit like gobbledygook. Um, but I think if you have a brief understanding of, of what happens with our hormones, um, it's going to give you it's going to give you more it'll help you make better choices because you'll you'll have it you'll think ah oh, yeah that's going to have a knock on effect to that hormone. Do I really want that to have that knock on effect which is going to cause all these not 
knock on effects and these sort of negative whirlpool down into the barrels of hell. No, you probably don't. So um, this is just going to be sort of an overview of easy to understand things that you, you need to be aware of if your weight is no longer healthy or if indeed you want to, you know, you, you're, you're at a healthy weight already, but you know you're going through the menopause and you can start to notice a few changes. That happened to me when I hit perimenopause. Um, I'd always, always been quite slim, always had a flat tummy. And I did, I did was doing way more exercise then than I am doing now. And I wasn't getting the results that I get now, but I noticed that all of a sudden, I mean, I've, I've never had like, an, I've never been a very curvy waistline. I've always been a bit sort of straight, straight up and straight down. But that straight up and straight down was going a bit more like a barrel. And it was just like, oof, something's, you know, something I need to change. What am I doing? So hence the journey of discovery. And it's been a fantastic journey. I have to say, I feel healthier and happier and more energized than I've felt for a long time. And that's just recovering from COVID too. So um, our hormones dictate where we store fat, how we store fat, how we break down fat how hungry we feel, how full we feel, um, and where we, you know, how we react to various things in our environment and things going around on us. So um, it's really not willpower. It's just an understanding of what is happening so that you can give yourself the tools to reach a healthy weight and to maintain it, okay? So that you get the best outcome, so that you don't end up being one of those statistics. And I want you to understand it's really, really doable. It is really doable. It's, it's not rocket science. Um, so just as a sort of brief overview, insulin. I think we're all aware of insulin and diabetes. Um, insulin is our fat storing hormone. Cortisol is our, one of our stress hormones. Cortisol, when our, when our stress, when we're under a lot of stress, all sorts of different types of stress, it makes, it raises our cortisol, which also raises our insulin. So it's a bit of a double whammy. So not only are we getting stressed, which makes us put on fat around our bellies, particularly, we're also increasing the preponderance of fat storing hormones in our bodies, which again makes us hold on to more fat. And then the more fat we have, the more estrogen we make, which makes us even more uppy and downy on that hormone sort of roller coaster of the menopause. It does have, it's a negative chain reaction, which is why it can all of a sudden get out of control. And you're thinking, oh my God, what, what am I doing? How do I get out of this? And I just want you to understand it is, it is absolutely doable. You need to focus on the quality of the, fo the food that you're eating. You need to use food as fuel. Um, you want to you want to make sure that you're eating the right kind of macronutrients at the right time. So major food groups at the right time. Um, you know, we all need to eat legumes, whole grains. I know this is, this is like, don't cut out food groups. We need carbs. Carbs that also include vegetables and fruit as it stands. Um, but you might associate carbs with like white bread. Now, sourdough is different because sourdough is a fermented bread. And I wish I'd started to mention this earlier, but I haven't. I always eat granary or, or brown bread or wholemeal. I don't eat much bread, to be quite honest. But when I do, it's normally granary or wholemeal because I like the flavor of that. But sourdough is also a healthy bread option. Just don't overdo it. Um, but things like white pasta, white rice, there are much healthier options that you can take. Those, those, they hang on to fluid, they make you hang on to water, they tend to bloat you out more, you make you more gassy. Um, they spike your blood sugars, which makes you release more insulin, which creates stress in the body, which makes you release more cortisol. And all of a sudden it's just like, oh my God, you know, that you might as well have just stuck that plate of spaghetti around your middle, because technically that's what it's done once you've ingested it into your body. Also, um, as we go through the menopause and as we put on weight, it affects how we respond to our um, satiety hormones. So leptin tells us when we're full, ghrelin tells us when we're hungry. The more weight we have on us, excess weight, we get deaf to those signals. One of the things I really sort of try and enforce, not enforce, but recommend in our fit community is um, be aware of when you start to feel full. I think so much, many of us are programmed to clear the plate. Only clear it if, you're, if you need it. If you don't, if, you're, if you've got halfway through or three quarters of the way through and you're thinking, actually, I've had enough now, just save the rest. 
put it in a pot and leave it for tomorrow. It's, or, or put it in the bin. If, if you cannot, if you haven't got a pot or you don't like to save food or give it to someone, because it's either in the bin or on your waste. Choice is yours. That, 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 that visual in my head works so powerfully. It's just like, if I mean, I do save everything, but if I weren't, if I weren't going to put it in a pot, it's either in the bin or on my waist. Which one do I prefer? Mm, probably in the bin. I hate wastage, but you know, you, I think you can get get the whole idea behind that. Um, so our hunger hormones are incredibly important to also help us manage our hunger hormones. We have to prioritize our sleep. If you are sleeping not enough, if you wake up feeling tired every morning, you just have to get to bed earlier. It might mean you don't watch your soap operas. It might mean you don't watch Netflix series. It might mean you don't, you know, you don't go out partying quite so often. Whatever your your thing is, and I know it's so tempting at the end of the day to think you should treat yourself. Yeah, oh, I'm just going to watch this because it's my treat, or oh, I'll catch up tomorrow. I'll probably sleep better tonight, and then you don't. You wake up feel tired, and then you make the wrong choices with your food food groups because your brain's telling you you want fast carbs, and you're thinking. Oh, I'm so tired. I can't be bothered to. I can't be bothered to resist it. So you eat fast carbs, and then that whole chemical reaction starts again. Sleep is absolutely important for our, for on so many different levels, but also for your gut health and those those satiety hormones. Gut health again is incredibly important. So you want when you're eating food as fuel, you're going to be eating fiber, which is the prebiotics for the probiotics. So probiotics are the healthy bacteria that live in our colon, really. Uh, sort of end of our that sort of large intestines or end of the digestive system um, and veggies and fruit that are high in fiber and legumes of course that is healthy food for our healthy bacteria we need that fiber helps keep us regular helps to keep your skin clear helps just to keep things moving properly we need fiber so you want you want to be focusing on high fiber foods and if you're new to high fiber, drink lots of water because you might, although it will prevent constipation, if you suddenly introduce fiber, you might feel a little bit more bloated. You might get a bit of gas. Just keep drinking lots of water. It will, your body will get used to it. And you'll, you'll end up, the great thing with fiber too is it sort of cleanses you as you go through. It's amazing if, if you're coming off a, a lifetime of not so healthy habits and a lot of processed food, it can take three or four weeks for your system to clean itself out sometimes even longer um, but they a higher fiber and lots of water diet will make a big big difference to you so just hang on in there if that's the case it's really important to understand how sleep and our hunger hormones are affected by um, or how we can control and, and affect positively and negatively affect our hormones by making wrong food choices so in my, if I were to advise you strongly, cut out processed foods, cut out refined sugar, eat lots of vegetables, fruits, healthy fats, lean protein, drink lots of water. Vegetables are also really good for uh, us helping us manage our sex hormones. So as we're going through the, uh, the menopause and we're on that big roller coaster, um, cruciferous vegetables particularly contain something called DIM, which will help you balance out your hormones. It'll help sort of manage some of them, you know, the brain fog, the hot flushes, that sort of thing, the, the mood swings. Um, and exercise, as always, you might think, oh God, she always talks about exercise. Well, it's true, but it's, it's absolutely necessary. If you've not exercised before, you need to start because as we go through the menopause, your bones are going to get more brittle your muscles will get weaker they don't stay the same they will atrophy unless you work them out you need a good comprehensive program of strength training and high intensity interval training the two of those combined will help you build muscle which will burn more calories um, it'll help keep you more flexible it'll help keep you stronger and more stable i know as we get older it's easier to trip over and break things break serious things um, if you're if you're feeling if you're strong if your balance is good, if your flexibility is good, you're not gonna hurt your back by bending over to pick up a pencil. Unfortunately, those account for many more back injuries than lifting heavy things. It's just crazy, but that's the way it is. Um, so strength training, high intensity, to, to high intensity interval training, and literally sort of, I do work at sort of 20 to 30 minutes, five or six times a week. 
I, I get amazing results and I, I, I enjoy my treats too. I eat food as fuel, uh, but my treats are a couple of glasses of wine in the evening and, um, and sometimes a piece of dark chocolate after my meal. That's it. But you know, when you'll find that when you're eating for fuel, when you're using food as fuel, you won't get those cravings. I promise you, it's amazing how they go. Even if you're in the habit of having like a biscuit with your afternoon cup of tea, you don't need the biscuit. Ask yourself, do you really need that biscuit? No. But if you really want something else, maybe have an apple or a, maybe have um, a couple of dates. Like I said, the high and bore on the good for us. A lot of us eat, now there's something I want you to consider, a lot of us eat for texture. If you like the gooey things, like the caramels, and mm, 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 again, dates are fantastic. You can also make your own little high energy protein balls, which you can make really gooey. So you can blend up like dates, uh, blueberries, maybe add some oats, low sugar granola, and then you could add some raw cacao nibs. Those are fantastic if you get like sweet tooth cravings. They're just like, oh, and they'll stop it and they're healthy, full of antioxidants. And those will give it a nice crunch. And then maybe some desiccated coconut. They take next to nothing to make. They cost a fraction of what you pay at the shops and a heck of a lot healthier. And either, you know, wrap them up and put them in the fridge or you can even freeze them. I freeze mine because I always make my mouth water even thinking of them now. I just get out a little ball and nibble away and it's, it's just gooey heaven. It's delicious. Another one is if you like different textures in a bowl, uh, normally for me, I, um, I do, I follow like an, an intermittent fasting regime of 16 hours off and eight hours on. We're all slightly different. What might work for me may not work for you, or you might build up sort of a 12 to 12. Just means that your insulin level, so your fat storing hormones are not being spiked a lot because every time we eat it releases insulin into our bloodstream so if you're if you're if you've got diabetes too if you're trying to lose weight if you're trying to just get back to a healthier existence i would do maybe start with 12 hours on 12 hours off and then work up to 16 hours without food and eight hour and an eight hour eating window it doesn't mean that you eat for the full eight hours by the way um i normally have a brunch at around sort of 10 30 11 o'clock and it's often some oats with uh, greek yogurt a little bit of oat milk, um, some low sugar granola and uh, blueberries, maybe a tiny little bit of banana. I scatter on my superfoods because the adaptogen herbs in there and the digestive enzymes and, and then some raw cacao nibs. So you've got like the smoothness of the yogurt, you've got the crunchiness of the granola and the cacao nibs, you've got the fruitiness of the blueberries and you've got the softness of the oats. And that is just like delicious. And then about 2, 2.30, I normally have my superfood shake, sometimes blend up raw cauliflower in that as well, frozen cauliflower rather. Um, it gives it a really nice creamy consistency and gives it a bit of extra oomph, plus it's more vegetables. And then have my evening meal about sort of seven o'clock-ish. And that gives me that sort of eight, eight hour eating window. Uh, and it's just three, sort of two meals and a, and a healthy snack in between time. And that works really, really well. But again, we're all slightly different. So your body may need slightly different stuff. It's, it's a dance of hormones. Our estrogen is reducing. So is our progesterone. Our progesterone is more of a calming hormone. And as our estrogen falls, our progesterone falls faster, which can cause that erratic nurse and that sudden anxiety that goes on and the lack of sleep. But there's so much that we can do ourselves um, to promote a healthy weight management with just a few simple steps. So just in summary, prioritize your sleep, reduce stress or manage stress more effectively. Cortisol, we have four times the amount of cortisol receptors around our belly. Essentially, that means that when our cortisol is spiked, when our, when our stress is spiked, um, it encourages us to hang on to fat around our belly much more. So that, that might mean... It might mean reading or listening to interesting books and podcasts as how you can maintain your boundaries if you live with somebody who has a toxic effect on you. It'll help you, it'll help you, I think it'll just help you build a, found, a firm foundation under who you are and that you, to make you make choices that are right for you, not necessarily right for that other individual. Um, when we eat sugar, when we eat processed foods, again, that's another stress on our body. So it whacks up our cortisol, stress hormone, whacks up our insulin, our fat storing hormone. <sighs> and then the more fat we put on, the more estrogen we make. So again, we're getting bigger 
um, menopause, more, more intense menopause symptoms. It really is, it's a dance. And if you can cut out sugars, cut out processed food, or reduce them significantly, there's nothing wrong with raw sugar. Sugar in fruit and vegetable, you're good to go. Look at food as fuel. Eat food as nutrition. Become aware of your hunger hormones. Maybe buy smaller plates. Make sure that the majority of your meals have a good proportion. I would say 50% of your plate should be vegetables. Try and eat vegetables more often than just once a day. Also eat fruit. And yeah, healthy fats, lean protein, high fiber foods, legumes, uh, grains, whole grains. Whole grains have got a wide range of B vitamins in them, which we need. People who say, oh no, cut, cut out all grains. Don't eat grains. If we don't eat grains, we're not getting a lot of those B vitamins. Um, yes, you can take supplements, but supplements, we're not designed to eat supplements. I, I think supplements are great to some degree, but don't rely on them. Get, get your, get, get your, what you need from your food, from food, not pill format. Um, unless of course you've got some medical problem that says you can't have grains, you know, if you've, um, uh, colitis and that sort of thing. I, I know that makes eating those sorts of foods much more difficult. In, in actual fact, he died now, not from colitis, unfortunately. He cured himself from serious ulcerative colitis, a guy in Hawaii called David King. And um, I think it was David King. And um, just by juicing, he had a green juice every day. He juiced spinach, I don't know, kale, uh, all sorts of green things, celery, and drank that every day. And it helped him heal his gut sufficiently that he could actually start to reintroduce proper food, healthy food. And it was a process that helped him to heal his gut. Oh, David Klein, I think his name was, helped him to heal his gut 100%. So even if you are struggling with serious gut issues, start small. Green juice every single day it'll make a massive, massive difference to you. So if, if you are still thinking, well, I still don't know where to start. I've no idea what exercises to do. I don't know how to get my nutrition on point. Message me. There is, if you're watching this on YouTube, there's a link at the bottom of this. Click that. It'll take you through to a short form, which will. You, I just want you to fill out because it will give me a good indication of how I can help you best. Then I suggest let's arrange a quick call and we can go over various options available to you. Um, if you're watching this on Instagram, click the link in my bio. You can get through to that form there, Fit for Life form I think it's called and or if you're on watching this on Facebook um, just send me a message and I can get that form th sent through to you so just know it's a very very doable process it takes commitment on your part it takes action on your part it's never ever too late to start but if you haven't started yet start today you cannot delay because unless you want to be one of those statistics, you absolutely have to get started because it's not going to get any better. The fairies are not going to come and sort of like magically waft stuff over you. That means your, your symptoms go away. You just have to make a few changes which are easy to do. And I, I'm here to help you make those changes if you want to. So um, thanks for hanging in with me and make it a great week. Stay safe and catch you soon.